Microstratigraphy is exactly what it sounds like, examining the different layers that we have in an outcrop, but at a much finer scale. So microstratigraphy allows us to get in, uh, clear off a surface and really examine uh, what small uh, or what occurrences are happening at a much smaller time scale. It's looking at smaller sections of the larger stratigraphic region of the area. And so we use microstratigraphy to tell us a bit more about what's going on in the landscape at a smaller scale. In this sequence, we can see several different kinds of events that occurred. Um, starting with the top layer, we have a volcanic tuff, which was laid down by um, a fluvial system. And this tuff is about 1.51 million years old. So below it, we have older layers, and uh, unlike the tuff, we can't get an exact date for them, but we know that they're older because they, are, um, they were laid down before, so they're lower down in the section. Well, one of the most basic principles that helps you understand uh, geology is the law of superimposition. Basically, it's, it's super simple. You have lower layers that are older, and the layers that are deposited on top of them are younger, and that's one of the most basic things that geologists use to help them uh, figure out what's going on in the landscape. And also looking at how these layers are piled on top of each other. So if I look at this, I see that all of my layers are horizontal and I can breathe a sigh of relief because I know that there wasn't a lot of tectonic activity that's causing weird things to happen. So I can just assume that each layer is younger than the next one as long as I'm going up in time. So just by looking at the simple, the composition of each of these layers, we can actually tell a lot about the type of environment that laid down these sediments. So we're moving down section and we've come into a more silty uh, surface and uh, based on the weathering when it's kind of crumbly like this on the outside this is called weathering basically it also happens to fossils um, it happens to any rocks um, so based on the weathering and but one of the things that geologists do you'll see some strange behavior uh, is actually tasting the sediment and so Mm, not the best piece, but I can taste it and then try to form some clay snakes uh, in it. And if you can form clay snakes, you can tell that there's a good amount of clay in here. And this, uh, from this material, we really don't have very much clay. It's mostly silt, and I can tell that because I ate it and I couldn't form a clay snake. Moving down section even more, uh, we go back to having a more clayey uh, land surface with more plants, obviously, because I can see these carbonates and root casts uh, in the surface. And then finally, uh, below this surface, we moved out of having or being in a terrestrial environment, so somewhere where um, somewhere that's not full of water and uh, into a fluvial system that was laying down slowly in a low energy environment, these beds of sand that you can see here. And uh, each of these little beds is made up of a fine grain sand. And so based on grain size, we can tell um, how fast the water was moving. If the grains are bigger, for example, you would have had a more high energy stream because it can move bigger rocks, right? The fossils to tell me what kind of organisms were living on the landscape. And uh, those we often pick up from the surface or we can excavate. Uh, but I also try to correlate and um, try to understand how those fossils fit in with the geology and what layer they're coming out of. It, it gives us a lot more information about the organisms themselves to understand what the context was that they were buried in. Stratigraphy helps us understand not only ancient environments, but uh, the types of environments that the organisms that we're studying, such as hominins, would have been living in.